This is Ableton Live set up as for our live set. You can see on the right the song which has got the BPM typed into the right of it and then the various clips that are going to be played in that scene. Computer's just turned itself off. You'll also note that each song has got two scenes. That's because we trigger the scene and play the Beat Seeker clip which does a two bar count in and then trips itself to Beat Seeking after that. So that gives us the actual tempo of the song to start with and then we follow the drummer. And then it moves down to the next scene and then we trigger the various clips at whatever point in the song we want to trigger the clip. Now that's because if you trigger the scene normally it'll play every single clip in that scene which obviously we don't want. You'll note here as well in this song that we've got called Weather Girl there's an audio clip. Um, that is some thunder and lightning that we've got which precedes the song on the record and we thought we might as well put it into the live show. Uh, the rest of the clips are just various uh, parts of the song. You'll see we've got the columns um, intro, verse, chorus, break, and then something to finish the song. Um, they're not actual parts. They're just largely drones or a drone playing a couple of notes. And they can be played as you actually want to or not played at all so in effect it's it's an instrument and you'll see below the um, the ins and outs are set to go um, into the master and then you'll see the master track here uh, the cue out is the click track that goes to uh, outputs three and four and then the main output which is the actual synth in stereo goes to one and two uh, <clears throat> this is on the stand so that uh, it can be actually accessed during the playing. I talked about outputs 3 and 4. That relates to the uh, the Sapphire Pro 40. Um, outputs 1 and 2 are going to the front of the house out of the DI box there. And then the clip track with a front of the house mix goes out of the monitor. So balanced XLR output, which the sound engineer will look at the, the rig and go right and just click it in. doesn't even need me to say what's going on. The red light's below, that's my um, my Warwick 1000 um, watt bass amp, um, which I bought because it's got two channels, so if I needed to, I could actually route the synth through my bass amp, which has got a very good full range response, just in case we happen to be in a place where the, um, the monitoring isn't great, so we could at least hear it through my bass rig as well. The, uh, the triggering, when you're trying to play bass guitar in a ska or a reggae band, given that the bass guitar is actually quite um, <laughs> fundamental to the whole thing. Um, I have to be able to trigger this not just using the push, which sits below the laptop, and you'll notice that, let me just show you quickly, that's the grid for the clips. Then if you look at the push, you'll see it's reflecting that grid. Um, the, the, um, the buoy aquamarine one's done on the right there, the actual Beat Seeker triggering clips that I, I mentioned before. And then you can see there's a blank line which um, which uh, goes between each song. Uh, you'll notice actually if you go from the, the, the second um, aquamarine uh, blob down on the right and you'll notice there's a blank line but it's got an audio clip at the end and then the audio clips duplicated underneath that that's because I actually want to start the song off with the thunder and lightning. So the thunder and lightning is playing to the audience through front of the house while we listen to the click track. And then we start, Beat Seeker kicks in, click track stops, and then I would um, trigger the various um, clips as I wanted to. So you can hear that's not playing at the correct speed but um, because it would be beat seeking, but that's how it works. So that was um, the introduction to that song, which is called Weather Girl.
that's the verse if I want to play something during the verse which is the same as the intro um, this is a um, a sort of a generic pad which is note following and it just plays through once because it's essentially playing the chorus sorry that was the same one and let me just show you what's happening here with Ableton when I do that this would be this would be the break so we have this playing underneath while we do our thing on that and that's a loop so I have to stop that and then this would be the ending nice big note which revolves around and we watch the drummer and when he finally looks like he's gonna stop then I hit the button and it stops but being a bass guitarist I can't really be messing around with push but at least push allows me to do this without um, having to mess around with a keyboard um, which is a real turn off so the 12 step is what I actually use to trigger these clips um, the uh, sorry it's upside down let me turn it around the other way for you so if I um, I'll just show you how it works so pressing that moves me down um, a scene pressing that starts things off so you're listening to the front of the house sound now that's the thunder and lightning on the um, that song weather girl and then what I have to do then is move it down a scene oh sorry and you can see that flashing light that's the audio clip so I, I know that that's still playing now if I want to play that some more I play it some more and then I stop it because I've got it set to legato um, I actually have to move this down one scene to then get into the actual song itself so there's no danger of me triggering off every single clip which if I did that it would sound like this which we don't want so again I, I, I pressed this button here and that stopped everything from playing so we're now back to um, back to where we were before so I go down a scene and I'm now this particular um, scene is showing me that I've got two clips which are available to play so which is that and I can stop that like that please stop anyway if that happens I can just press this and everything stops so it, sorry it's got itself into some kind of a mode which I'm not sure what it is but that's easy enough to sort out by taking a look here yeah it's changed song and, and um, so anyway 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 you have to have when you're trying to play an instrument you have to have multiple methods of triggering clips and you have to have foolproof ways of being able to turn it off quickly which I think I've indicated here I have you can see on the push what had actually been going on there I'd ended up with three clips from two different songs playing at the same time uh, which meant I couldn't turn them all off easily so in the usual method with the clip you just press um, an empty clip underneath and they all stop so when I'm playing live if I just had the 12 step I wouldn't know what was going on uh, and I'd have to peer at the TV screen at the, the laptop screen which is not on so the push even in you know no no sort of lighting on a stage allows me to see immediately what's going on that's why it's there and it's very cool as well because when we get into a breakdown scenario I can ascribe different um, parameters of the synth sound to the knobs and the top here and I can do the normal DJ type thing of um, you know introducing cutoffs LFOs all the rest of it to alter the sound so um, that's basically my rig if I stand back um, without falling over because I'm in my studio with all my bits um, you can see um, hopefully how it looks and uh, it's on a um, it's on a, a Gibraltar hardware um, drum stand creation I think this is going to show you better if I get the light from the window out of the way 
um, you can see it's essentially a um, a snare drum stand with an extension and then another stand beside it with the laptop and the the push on the top of it um, very very stable I mean if I'm jumping around on a small stage and the drummer is literally behind so that the laptop can pick up the drummer's beat from the laptop's integral microphone so I don't have any more wires going around the place um, I've got to make sure that I've got something which is very very stable so you can see that fits on a very small stage and it's even immune to me jumping around um, and uh, seems to seems to work absolutely fine well I hope you found that interesting thanks a lot bye